still, which you can learn, study, explore, how to find this balance between effort and relaxation. This is one of the first and most valuable life skills that we can learn in the meditation practice. The meditation practice is not something to be seen as completely removed from and separate from practice in everyday life. The distinctive character of formal meditation is provided by our efforts to minimize obstructive conditions and maximize supportive conditions. So we sit, we sit together in a quiet space, put down, turn off all our devices, The atmosphere is not too hot, not too cold, the microphone's not too loud, not too soft. No, we haven't got there yet. The goal of meditation, the goal of Buddhist education, Buddhist training, is to see things the way they are. And the beginning, from the very first unsteady step of meditation, is the effort see things the way they are. Application of the meditation technique is a very effective means of encountering your mind. So much of modern life allows, encourages us to turn away from the real world of our experience. And meditation is grounding ourselves in real life. What's really going on? What's really going on is the physical body feeling tone, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Perceptions, thoughts, emotions, sense consciousness. This is the real world. So we are learning how to extend the time in which we are comfortable, alert, aware in the real world of our experience. place our mind on our meditation object, for example, the breath, as someone who is facing a challenge. The challenge is how can we create a relationship between the mind and the object such that the mind prefers the object to any other mental object. If you can discover that contentment and sober, alert, gentle contentment with your meditation object, 
the mind is so much less likely to slip into memory and imagination. We talk a lot about present moment awareness. In fact, you have no choice but to dwell in the present moment. There's nothing else. The past is a presently appearing memory. It arises and passes away in the present moment. Rises in the present, passes away in the present. The future is a thought. It arises in the present, it passes away in the present. You don't have to fight with the past and the present, create a fence or a wall to prevent the mind going on a journey into the past and the present, because the past and present are just the names we use to refer to presently occurring phenomena, memory and imagination. The mind on our breath, the breath is a very good object because it's bland and uninteresting. It doesn't hold us to it. It doesn't it doesn't interest us. So the only way that you can stay with the breath is through considered intelligent effort. One of the important mental factors which will help us to find this interest, commitment, contentment with the breath, the patience to stay with the breath is having a big picture understanding of why it's so important to do this. What role formal meditation plays in our life, what value it has, what are the drawbacks, what is the suffering inherent in a lack of mindfulness. So before we begin the meditation, we need to review, just check the raw material that we will be working with in this session of meditation. Is there a, a flexibility, is there an energy, interest, enthusiasm? Or is the, does the mind feel a little bit heavy, and resistant? Are there certain worries and concerns that are swirling around in the mind? Because we have to very um, carefully deal with those, those issues before we can apply ourselves to the meditation object. So we should all recommend that you find a collection, or we call it like a database of inspiring thoughts, images, reflections that you can bring to mind immediately in order to prepare the mind for meditation. You might call to mind the image of a great teacher, someone who has practiced well, someone who embodies his qualities of wisdom and compassion and purity and, 
and a desire to follow in their footsteps, to emulate them, arises in the mind. We might remind ourselves that defilements, which are the cause of suffering, never disappear by themselves. There are no flukes, there's no heavenly intervention. Defilements will disappear from our mind only through the practice of the Eightfold Path. And the most intense, focused, complete practice of the Eightfold Path is in formal meditation. So if we're sincere in our faith in Buddha Dhamma Sangha and the value of Buddhist training, then this is the time for us to show that by the sincerity of our attention on the in-breath and the out. Thank you.